Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Contact Mine. With this mod, we have one option, and there is nothing in the tuning menu. What you see is what you get. And when you are the Contact Mine, there is basically nothing you can do. You should be the car that makes contact with the Contact Mine. So as you would expect, when you make contact with it, you get an explosion. Most of the time, the explosion will do decent damage to your truck and pop it into the air just like that. It should still be drivable even though the front left axle is broken. So let's go again for round two. We're just going to go at it with the front once more. Beautiful explosion. And it has really torn up the front of my truck. The engine is now sitting out in the open, but we can still drive. That means it's time for round three. And this is probably going to kill it because the explosion is going to hit directly onto the engine. Oh, maybe not actually, because I saw the tire fly off. So maybe the tire absorbed the impact and we are still good to go. Come on, truck. You got this, right? No, it doesn't. The truck is dead. Had a lot of damage to the front. And that was all from three impacts into the mine. So I'll reset everybody and we'll have a new fight. This time we're going to use a Charrier FCV. How about the Vivas S410Q Arsenic, whose name is far too long. As punishment, it must move the mine. So if you hit it at about five miles per hour or less, you can actually shove it along like that. The important thing is just the initial impact speed. As long as it's about five miles per hour, you're okay. But if you hit it at like 10 miles per hour, that's too fast. You're going to blow it up. And we're going to continue blowing this guy up for having such a long name. So we're going to do a lot of rear end only impact so we're just making sure we hit just the rear and that is completely ruined the rear left axle but we should still be able to drive because this is all wheel drive the front wheel still work right let's see yep it works fine so smack it again Ooh, that's a good flip and land on the wheels rear drive shaft broken that's okay front wheels are still working i just saw a little bit of fire as punishment you get hit in the mine on the side of the vehicle since the rear is already so beat up Excellent. That was a little bit closer to the front than the side, but we still got some damage on the side. And flipping this guy can be a pain because, yeah, that happens. You grab the trim and you just rip the trim off. You got to make sure you grab the actual body piece. And is it still drivable? Yep. Oh, nope. That actually broke it. You saw I said front right axle broken. At that point, we can no longer drive. It's funny the things that can actually kill a car, isn't it? So now let's try something different. We're going to try crashing with mostly just the front of the vehicle and we're using a Burnside Special for this because I think it'd be a nice, strong, durable vehicle for crashing with the front because it's a big American vehicle and it's real wheel drive so the engine sits back a little bit farther so it has more area in the front that can be exploded on and we're going to see just how well this works. We already lost steering a little bit because we are doing this basically three wheels. Like we have a rim on one side and a wheel on the other side. Yeah, that rim ain't doing much at all. Oh, we were barely able to avoid crashing into that with the rear. That was lucky. I should have thought about that. Yeah, with the steering being so bad, it's going to be harder to avoid things. Wow, that front corner is really popped up into the air. Probably not going to be too many more impacts before this thing is dead. I think maybe three at the most. Probably, though, this might kill it. We are upside down. Oh, we are not upside down anymore. You know, that curved roof, really good at flipping it upright. So again, the front's all mangled up, still putting power down, still driving. Come on, Burnside, go for another one. That looked like it did nothing. Burnside is too strong. You can't stop Burnside. Come on, Burnside, let's go for another one. Straight at it. That's a hard one. The front is kind of looking the same between impacts. Like it's a little more damaged, a little more damaged, but it's not having like, huge changes in the way it looks we got over rev risk that's what i gotta worry about see it's like it's a little bit higher up in the corner but it's still okay we can still drive it right yep wow this thing has really surpassed expectations it's just trucking along after every single one i don't know how it's managing to do this another one we're good oh it looks really different now like it is really shredding the front apart, but the engine is still there. It's still good. Ignore the smoke. That's a feature. This is probably going to tear some pieces off. Yep, I see something flying off in the distance. That was the front bumper. There is nothing left to protect the engine, yet it's still going. All right, this is probably going to kill it, right? 
Nope. The unstoppable Burnside is here. I can't believe it. This thing is so wrecked up and it's still going. Front left axle broken. Okay. That's fine. We still got one more wheel. We still can put power down somehow. I am just so shocked. Oh, we got bad steering though. Smacking in the wall a little bit. All right, come on, Burnside, keep going. I know you can't really steer, but you can explode. Front right axle broken. Okay, so at this point, we literally have no steering at all. I can just accelerate and brake. So this is pretty much gonna be the end for the Burnside, and I did not expect it to last that long. It was an absolute trooper who would not give up, and it still has not given up. The only reason we have to retire it is because it can't get to the mine, but it can still put the power down somehow, looking like that. Wow. So now, let's try something dumb. Let's try transporting the mine in the back of a truck. And placing the mine in the truck, we could try to teleport it, but it's very, very difficult to do it precisely, so we're gonna use the map editor for this. And the truck is not exactly aligned with the grid of the map, so you have to do a little bit of back and forth maneuvers here to get it perfectly lined up, like we overshoot it, and then we come back, does that look good? That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more to the right. Then we lower it as close to the bed as we can so it doesn't blow up the second we drop it. Perfect. And now we are ready to drive around with a mine in the back of my pickup truck. My curiosity here is, can we accelerate hard enough or brake hard enough to cause the mine to explode? So acceleration is no. Braking is yes, though. That has blown up the mine. Still drives. So why don't we try to go for round two of transporting the mine because I think we should be able to line it up or we could just plop a new mine in this thing. We have to do a little bit of thinking, but as long as we think correctly, it should be easy enough. So what we're gonna do is we reset the mine, the mine blows up off in the distance, and the location of the mine is very easily visible because it has a piece of smoke coming off from it. So we just try to make the bed of the truck line up with that. So that looks uh, pretty good. I think that should be good. We reset the mine and yeah. That worked. We can now transport another mine in the same pickup truck. This time we're gonna drive a little bit more carefully. I wanna see if you drive careful enough, can you actually transport the mine? So this is gonna be the hard part. We're gonna be going at 80 miles per hour and then we need to slow down, but not too much. Because if we slow down too much, the mine will hit the back of the cab of the truck and blow up just like last time. So that was probably as hard as you could slow down. That's close to probably as hard as you can steer, but it's still doing good. Whoop. That's not what I expected. The bumps in the road were blew it up. Not my driving. There's nothing I could have done aside from drive slower through that section, so that was pretty impressive. All right, one more little test I want to do with this thing. Can we off-road with the mine? No. As expected, that does not work if you floor it. So what if we drive very carefully off-roading? I think it'll last a little bit here, but this is a really bumpy section. It's going to take a beating, isn't it? Oh yeah, look at how much it's moving around. It's only a matter of time until it moves around so much that it bumps it in a weird way or bounces it into the air and it, boom, it's gone. So the mine can be transported, but you have to be very, very careful off-roading and decently careful when you're on the road. Now, what if all you have is an Autobella Piccolina and you need to transport the mine using that? <laughs> it's probably not gonna work out well, but we're gonna find out. So we back it up a little bit so it hopefully ends up inside of the vehicle. Excellent! And you can see just how big the mine is. It takes up most of the inside of this car. It is a small car to be fair. So we're gonna drive pretty aggressively here and see if the mine blows up or not. And I'm not really sure if this is gonna blow up easier or harder than the pickup truck. It really depends on how the mine is sitting in the car and the interiors of vehicles. It's really hard to look in there while you're driving to see. Ah, yes, it looks like it's gonna blow up easier or it's gonna blow up harder. So we're just gonna see what happens. But based on the way I'm driving, I would say it's actually safer to transport the mine inside of your vehicle right next to you than in the bed of your pickup truck. Mostly because it's kind of strapped down in this situation, so it's not moving around as much. When it was in the bed of the pickup truck, it was kind of free moving all over the place, and that's what caused it to blow up. Here's a dumb idea. What happens if we do donut? with the landmine in our car. Nothing at all. It is perfectly okay with you doing donuts. All right, I see like there's a dip in the road here, right? If we come at this fast and hard, can we hit the dip hard enough to make it blow up? Kind of like what we did with the truck. Whoa, it was a little too close to the building, wasn't it? 
So I just want to like hit the ground hard right there. Yep, that blew it up. Whoa, it really blew it up. What a weird looking shape to that explosion. And check this out, like the thing really just popped open like that. But we gotta see that again, because that is crazy looking. Now I noticed when I was driving it earlier, it felt a little bit more top heavy because of the mine. So I just want to see, can we roll the vehicle over to cause the explosion? We just kind of like jiggle it back and forth and watch the weight move around. Yeah, there it goes. We did manage to flip it over thanks to the help of the mine, I'm pretty sure. And it really popped us in the air nicely. And again, it looks like the same as last one. But I want to see the actual explosion in slow motion. And the easiest way to do that is if you know exactly when it's going to explode. You can easily know when it's going to explode by crashing into a wall to initiate the explosion. So there's a wall. We use an 8 times slow-mo as we approach it. Probably do 16 times slow-mo right before explosion. And even at 16 times slow-mo, you can see explosions are fast. The thing just explodes almost instantly, and you got the doors flying in every which direction, and just a weird, weird looking vehicle at this point. Somehow it can actually drive ish. I don't really know what's going on, but it's moving around. That's weird looking. Like, what the heck is going on here? The wheels aren't moving from the accelerating, but we're moving around. That was strange. All right, so next. I want to do something that involves a little bit of setup. So I'm going to set up a bunch of mines all over the place and I'll be back when I'm done. Ta-da! We now have a bunch of mines in a row and we're going to crash into them. But to do that, we'll get a different car. How about the Highway Police version of the ETK K series? And we want to hit these with a little bit of speed. We want to be going like highway speeds at this. So we're going to put some distance between us. That should be enough to get up to highway speeds. If we hit a tree, that's okay. That's okay, we're just going to reset the car anyways. I just want it to be pointed in the correct direction. So now I'll be able to go highway speeds. We'll smack into a line of mines, and we're going to see what happens when you have them all lined up like this. So here we go. We're going to use a lot of slow-mo here, 16 times slow-mo. There's the first one, second, and then third. Oh, look at that. It's like a chain reaction. They're just going boom, 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 one after the other. Is it pushing me farther in the air with each explosion, though? I don't think so. I think most of the distance we got there was coming from the fact we were going fast when we hit the mines. Now I'm going to change up the setup of the mines real quickly and I'll be back once it's done. And you know what? I'll let it be a surprise what I set up at the end of this. Although I will mention the way I set all this up is I just use the node grabber and pull them around because I'm being lazy right now. So anyways, we have a pile of them just sitting in the middle of the road. We are literally flying inches above them. I actually might be able to fly over this. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to keep this going at 100 times slow-mo because it's so dramatic this way. What's going to happen? Are we going to fly over it? Actually, we somehow are a little bit. Oh, I did not expect it to be this cool. Just don't touch it. Oh, you touched one. You fool. You fool. They're all going to go off in a chain reaction just like before now. That's actually really cool the way it happened, though. I will speed it up, uh, a little bit more to 16 times slow-mo as we get shot off. See, one thing that's kind of nice is we were going so fast, it takes a second for the explosion to actually happen, so we didn't really get damaged by it too much. We're mostly getting damaged by the fact we were driving 70 miles per hour into the barrier. That was really cool. I gotta do this again, though, where I don't just fly over all of them. So we'll change the car up a little bit for that one. We'll get something that's a little slower, so we won't accidentally do that. We'll get the SE V6 towing package version of the Legron. And then once again, we'll go ahead and reset everybody so all the mines are nice and fresh and ready to go. Takes a second. And then we are off at Legrand speed. Yes, that's an actual measurement of speed. We are going one Legrand per hour, which is also one Legrand per minute. Don't ask me how those units work. They just do that. So it is a little bit more dramatic looking than just if you had one mine sitting on its own. But it doesn't seem like it does a lot more damage than just one mine. Uh, I've seen one single mine do close to that amount of damage. It might do a little bit more with a pile of them, but it's not like it does five times more damage with five times more mines. It just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this is MyBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by watching the mines explode. So do the right thing and I'll see you next time. And here's a little spoiler for a future video. 
I'm going to make a modification of this mod that changes up how it works a little bit for a really fun idea I have. Hopefully it'll work. It should be pretty easy to modify it to do what I want. And uh, we'll see how that goes. If you don't see a video for it, it probably didn't work out.